got true power. There's no hype about this guy. He can not only become heavyweight champ of the world, but he can keep it for a long time. He has never ducked an opponent. He's been willing to fight anyone at any time. That Lennox Lewis, is he a threat to be the best heavyweight there is? That Lennox Lewis is definitely a threat to be the best heavyweight on this planet today. Six feet five inches tall and down goes Biggs from the solid right cross. Lennox Lewis was always large. A divorce saw him move with his mom to Canada when he was 12. The young man found himself in sports. He was a presence on any court or field he stepped on. At age 13, Lennox truly found his second home in boxing. One year after winning a state championship in basketball, Lennox Lewis is representing Canada in the Olympics. At 22, Lennox wins a gold medal the second time around. With that, he returns to London to begin his professional career. I'm the best fighter in the world, on the planet, no guy test this month. At six foot five inches, Lennox had one of the longest reaches in history, power in either hand. For much of his early career, it was as simple as that. His first taste of the top level came against Mike Weaver. Weaver is the former WBA heavyweight champion. A former top contender now passed his best. Looking to jab and Weaver stays inside. Lennox laid down the law early with his one-two. Lennox still showed his inexperience, allowing Weaver's pressure to bother him. But Lennox retook control and mercifully ended it with a mean right hand in the sixth. the boxing world very well. You're a likable young man and a, and a gentleman, and I appreciate that. Lennox kept fighting, learning as he went, and delivering one sensational KO after another. His next big fight came against Donovan Razor Ruddock. Ruddock had proved his toughness and earned his reputation after a pair of hard fights with Mike Tyson. Lennox Lewis did not have a hard fight with Razor Ruddock. At the end of the first, he decked him with a perfectly placed right hand. Ruddock never really recovered. Lennox laid him out quickly to start the second. I realize that Razor is a person that gets agitated really fast, and even though I'm quiet, you can still hear my silence. His next fight was one for the history books. His meeting with Frank Bruno was the first time two Brits had fought for a heavyweight championship. We'll put you to sleep. I may even bring a pillow to ringside for you. Big boy, you going. You must fall. You will fall. Bruno did well in the early rounds walking Lennox down behind his jab, landing bombs with both hands. As the fight carried on, Lennox got his jab going and swelled Frank's eye with a telephone pole of a jab. The end came suddenly in the seventh. Bruno hurt Lennox, who listed into the corner and cracked him with a violent left hook that shook Bruno. Lennox poured it on to get the stoppage in the seventh. Lewis 
Then came the turning point in the career of Lennox Lewis. As Lennox throws his jab at McCall, he slips and counters with a combo that puts the big lad down. Down goes down Lewis, goes Lewis having caught a short left hand. Oliver's trainer was a man by the name of Emmanuel Stewart. After the fight, Emmanuel spoke to Lennox, told him he dropped his right hand as he jabbed. Stewart saw the weakness and trained McCall to take advantage. With that, Lennox fired his trainer on the spot and submitted himself to the tutelage of Manny Stewart. In need of a new trainer, Lennox hired Emmanuel Stewart, ironically, the man who had prepared McCall to beat him. Manny set about ironing out all the little wrinkles in Lennox's game. Under Stewart, Lennox evolves into his final form, fills out physically to 240 pounds, throws 52 jabs in the first round of the Tommy Morrison fight, times a left hook to sink him to a knee in the second, methodically picks him apart before posting three more knockdowns in the final two rounds. Stewart liked what he saw, but knew Lennox was a work in progress. The heavyweight division of the 90s was madness every weekend. While Mike, Holyfield, and Riddick Bowe caused a series of insane incidents and the occasional riot, Lennox was playing chess, listening to reggae, and smashing just about everyone put in front of him, showing constant improvement on his flaws. His first defense of his undisputed championship was a two-round destruction of the six-foot-seven-inch Michael Grant. An uppercut dropped him at first, then a series of shots from the collar tie rattled Grant again. A sweeping right hand dropped him once more as the round came to a close. The second round was formality. Grant swung for the fences. Lennox placed his uppercut perfectly. Grant drops like a shot deer. Lennox was never more on point than his rematch with Baltimore slugger Haseem Rockman. A motivated Lennox was scary, could rock you with a jab, and there was always two coming. Could punch with any heavyweight, was deadly accurate, and smart enough to know the rule of three. In response to Lennox spamming his jab to use his reach advantage, Rockman tries to get his own jab going. It works the first two times. Lennox learned on the fly and anticipated the pattern and timing and even punch. Placed his counters perfectly. It's a compliment to say he had forgettable power. I said that the belts were on loan. So he's had his 15 minutes of glory. Now they come back home to me. It took until 2002 to get Mike in the ring with Lennox Lewis. I was gonna rip his heart out. I'm the best ever. I'm the most brutal and vicious and most ruthless champion there's ever been. There's no one can stop me. Lennox is a conqueror. No, I'm Alexander. He's no Alexander. I'm the best ever. There's never been anybody as ruthless. I'm Sonny Liston. I'm Jack Dempsey. There's no one like me. I'm from Nairclaw. There's no one that can match me. My style is impetuous. My defense is impregnable. And I'm just ferocious. I want your heart. I want to eat his children. Praise be to Allah. When the night finally came, it was clear though nearly the same age, Lennox aged like wine, Mike aged like a fighter. Mike charges from the opening bell. Lennox simply refused to fight Mike in close. Resting his weight on the back of Mike's neck to keep the power puncher doubled over.
Linux put on an absolute masterclass of distance management. Mike, without the spring in his legs, was stuck on the far end of Linux's jab. It was the uppercut that truly sealed his fate. Mike couldn't get under it and ended up eating it all night. Linux finally put the lights out on Mike's time at the top with a right hand disguised with Manny Stewart's infamous blinding jab. Mike moves his head into a right hand he never saw coming. And again, he was just splendid, a masterful boxer. I just take my hand off to you and he pleaded, if you can do him, give me one more chance, I'd be greatly appreciated. I'm the best fighter in the world, on the planet. No guy test this month. The swan song of the Lion of London came against number one contender and heir apparent Vitaly Klitschko. The six foot seven inch Ukrainian met Lennox punch for punch in a slugging heavyweight classic. Vitaly was testing the champion. until a short right hand slashed his eyebrow, causing one of the nastiest cuts in boxing history. Lennox treated it as a bullseye. He was just looking for the big right hand. Lennox lands a final brutal uppercut. Oh, what an uppercut from Lewis. Absolute peace. Flops exhausted on his stool. In this moment, the doctor calls off the fight. Klitschko's face required 60 stitches to piece back together. An angry Klitschko demanded a rematch. Lennox chose not to press his luck. The Lion of London retires the first undisputed champion from England in nearly a century. The champion of the world, Lennox.